Haddon's gynecological record was horrific and saddening. In 16 years, she had 17 pregnancies. 12 of them ended in miscarriage or stillbirth, and of her surviving children, the oldest only lived 11 years. Anne's friends said there was nothing more moving than to see the queen and her husband mourning together as the little coffins mounted up. Sometimes they would weep together, other times they just sat in silence, hand in hand. It was unimaginably awful. To this day, no one really agrees on the reason behind Anne's suffering. At the time, doctors were beginning to manage the dreadful uncertainties of pregnancy with new technology such as the forceps. Unlike us, they also believed that they knew the cause of her condition. But it depended upon a view of the body that had prevailed since medieval times. Clearly there's something wrong for Anne. What did contemporaries think it might have been? They would have explained it in terms of her humoral constitution. At this time, bodies were understood as made up of four humours, blood, yellow bile, black bile and, and phlegm. And they had qualities of hot, dry, cold and, and moist. And as she became progressively uh, larger, shall we say, um, they would have understood it as having an imbalance in her humours. And so they would have uh, explained her constitution as her being cold and moist predominantly. She had things like watery eyes, for example. Um, and that would have affected her reproductive capacity. So in a book like this, it would explain one of the causes of abortion or miscarriage as being uh, due to viscous, slimy, slippery, phlegmatic, watery humours so that the conception would slip out of the womb. It would be unable to stay within the body um, and therefore more likely to miscarry. Clearly, women don't experience birth problems because they're too slippery. Do you think there are any more convincing explanations for her problems? In these sorts of books of advice, um, Jane Sharp's work on midwifery, oh, yeah. she says quite clearly that fat, overindulgent city women who eat too much and have access to far too many delicacies are far more likely to have difficult labours and, and a hard time childbearing than your labouring women who, who are leaner and healthier as a result. Even today, if somebody's overweight, if they're obese and they want to have children, the first thing they're told to do is to lose weight. Yes, absolutely. They were well aware at the time that these kinds of issues with body size um, had an, an impact on one's reproductive capacity. By the time Anne became queen in 1704, she was described as being sick with grief. All of her children had died. And after so many complicated pregnancies, she had no chance of producing any more. She took the throne knowing that she was the last in her line, that she was a stopgap queen, and that Parliament would choose her successor. 